Hola. Hello, good morning. I am going to share with you a summary of actions we organized last year, 2022, for the community. As Alejandro mentioned just now in the opening session, we're very pleased by the fact that in 2022, we went back to in-person activities. In May last year, we were in Cali, Colombia with our event LACNIC 37, which was a hybrid event. And we also had a meeting in Santa Cruz de la Sierra, Bolivia in October last year which is LACNIC 38, LACNOG 2022. These two events were very well received by our participants. In the month of May, we had 1,132 1 participants, both remote and in person. In October, 888, so about 1,000 for us. It is very important that you, those of you who participate in the meetings, tell us once the meeting is over, what you thought about the meeting, how you experienced the meeting, how you experienced the contents. And what you see in circles is the feedback survey, the results of feedback. Sí, 98% en, en Santa Cruz de la Sierra. And this is a very good input for us to consider future events. Información que nos dan propiamente. This provides input for us from in-person and remote participants. Yeah. Por otro lado, se... on the other hand, we're working with training with online campus. The campus has evolved quite a lot in past years. Derecha, el cuadro de la derecha, la de... On the right, you see how the number of students evolved. In 2022, we had 7,600 students. In the 22 editions of the courses, we organized the online courses that include technical issues, basic technical issues, issues more advanced topics, as well as introduction to internet governance. In 2022, we added five further courses to the training options at the campus. The first one was introduction to internet governance in English. This was available only in Spanish and now it's available in English. Digital information management in LEAs, basic course for the creation and management of CSERT. This is for cyber securities, DNS foundations, setup and configuration, modern setup and configuration, and basic internet. So as I was telling you, the campus continues to grow. And in addition to grow in the number of students and courses, in 2022, we launched something that you had been working on for quite some time. And these are specializations. What are the specializations in network operations? This is a training scheme organized based on levels so that those people who wish to have a comprehensive view on any of these three topics can do so and obtain a certification from LACNIC. These three specialty areas are addressed at different topics. The one in network operations in ISP, the second is network operation campus, and the third one is data center network operations. We already have these courses available for these three levels, basic, intermediate, and advanced levels. And for those who require additional information and would like to know how to follow the whole path of specialization, can go to the LACNIX booth where Sandra and Mariela will tell you about the path and how to obtain certification in some of these specializations. In addition to that, we have a service of webinars. We include different topics throughout the year. Last year, we had had 14 webinars on 10 different topics. We had a very high participation, 1,600 people 
30% more than in the previous year. It is important to know that the majority of these webinars have simultaneous interpretation and transcription in order to encompass the entire community. These webinars are recorded and this is then available in LACNIC's website. In fact, last year, there was a very high level of visualizations, about 2,000 visualizations of the information that is stored. This is a space we organize every year, and in LACNIC's website, you can check the webinar calendar for this year, 2023. In addition to that, we had a very exciting moment. This was the Lifetime Achievement Award. This is an initiative we organize every two years. This is an initiative that seeks to reward people who have had a lifetime achievement in our community. Last year, we had 16 nominations, and these nominations are proposed by the community. We make an open call, and anyone from the community can nominate someone who they consider deserves this award. These nominations are reviewed by a jury last year. This was composed by Alejandro Guzman, Carolina Guerria, Christian O'Flaherty, Mac Larson, and Luis Ignovitale, and Ms. Rivarra. And the, this was award to Hartmut Glaser. He actively contributed to the strengthening of the multi-stakeholder governance model and played a major role in the consolidation of regional organizations such as the Management Committee of the Internet in Brazil and the institutional development of NIC.br and also was also part of LACNIC's board for many years. This award was made, given in Santa Cruz, Bolivia in October last year. And this is something new. This is something that we have been working on since 2022. This is a effective collaboration project for applied research. What is this all about? This project seeks to generate agreements with universities or research centers in the region so that we can work in collaboration, LACNIC, with those uh, institutions to develop and strengthen applied research in the region. Last year, we started with the first phase where we conducted a survey of technical issues and in order to to match technical topics uh, that uh, LACNIC works with and uh, to map people in the region working on these topics. So overall, we mapped uh, 44 universities in the region in 16 different countries, and we identified 24 groups uh, of researchers. Having completed that survey, we uh, organized structured interviews to see how we were going to develop that work. And as a result of that, uh, last year, we had uh, five agreements with universities in the region in collaboration in developing this research and uh, a collaboration with NRSTIC for one of our programs for the Technical Women Mentoring Program. The university, one of the universities with which we are working, we signed agreements last year at the Tech of Monterrey, Food of Brazil, Palermo University in Argentina, UM, the University of Montevideo in Uruguay, and uh, Universidad de los Andes in Colombia. These five uh, universities and uh, are the research is going to be presented at uh, the uh, LACNIC Technical Forum. So I invite you all to see it, to listen, and uh, to uh, approach uh, the teams that are working with those issues. So let me tell you to let me uh, tell you about the FRIDA program. It's our program for financial support for initiatives that to promote an open, stable, and uh, secure internet. It is already 19 years old, as old as LACNIC, and it's a program that is based on uh, nominations. We call for applications. Uh, it's open now for projects working on you could present projects on three topics, stability uh, and security, uh, connectivity, and uh, open uh, and uh, free internet. In uh, last year, there were four grants uh, awarded to stability and security, two 
in connectivity and access, and two, for a free uh, and open internet. So just as we have worked uh, with uh, universities uh, for applied, we also seek to have a greater um, participation of the academia. And last year's, we had a significant increase in the number of universities that uh, uh, applied for Frida. And we also had a significant number of nominations in the category of stability and security. This is something that we have promoted for many years, too, to be able to reach and support uh, the issues that we know are of interest uh, for our community more directly. So, and in closing, let me tell you something very important. That is a process in uh, 2022. We reviewed the code of conduct and uh, we uh, held a public uh, consultation about this. You may remember having received a survey, a form, to answer this public query. In 2022, we reviewed the code. An external consultant that is specialized in ethics and compliance did it, and they reviewed the existing code and suggested a number of adjustments, always to improve and uh, to encompass topics that are important and also adjusting some things that uh, we need to improve from one year to the next. That was, it was a closed survey and we did that through two instruments. The first was a survey. It was always the same service. One of the channel was for members through Milaknik and the other one was in a form, an open form that was available for the people of uh, the community, not members. We received 172 uh, responses, all with a very favorable um, uh, view to the, the changes that had been proposed by the consultancy. And the code of, of conduct well, all was, all, was updated, and it is already available in our website. The, Updates were the four issues that had the, that were included in the consultation that was incorporate the appropriate use of the facilities as one of the expected behaviors for everybody for participating in in-person venues, preventive suspension of the person accused of the defendant, expanding the appeal for the defendants and expanding the ethics committee that had three um, people and will now have two more. Other adjustments, other legal adjustments were the incorporation of a scale in the existing actions that were described with severity, moderate and uh, uh, mild uh, severity. and. Uh, including sexual harassment among the unacceptable behaviors. So this is what I wanted to tell you. And so I, I'll i stay here for just a few minutes, just in case you have any questions. And uh, if not, you can find me at the coffee break or in the uh, corridor. So thank you, and I hope you enjoy the rest of the week. Thank you. Thank you, Laura.